I love multiplexers. They're probably my favorite digital logic device um, because there's a lot of things you can do for them or do for them. Well, you can't really do much for multiplexers, but you can do things with them. So uh, let's just review their basic operation. Uh, so what happens is you can essentially think of this as a switch that will connect one of these inputs to the output and will only do one at a time because it doesn't make sense to have multiple inputs directly connected to an output at a time because then it would be ambiguous as what that output might be is it one or the other so uh, we have these select lines and we have our inputs and this is our output and so say we want to look at uh, input 6 so you want to look at input 6 this is our LSB, our least significant bit. We want to feed the binary value for 6 in here. So uh, 6 is 1, 1, 0. So we feed 1, 1, 0 in here. And that means input 6 will be connected to output. So if we have a, uh, if we have a 0 here, that means that 0 is going to do 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 run through here and there's our zero. If we have a oops I gotta get rid of all my dots. If we have a one, that one's gonna feed through there. So whatever's on input six is going to go to the output. As long as we have this set up here. If we change this, let's say we change this one to a zero, or we're looking at four, right? Now we're looking at four. We're looking at this guy right here. Whatever's happening on 6, it can be going 0, 1 all over the place, but this output doesn't care because right now, this is only, we're not looking at 6 anymore, we're only looking at input 4. So multiplexers can be nice if you have multiple inputs that you want to feed into, a, uh, into some sort of limited system that we can only process one input at a time. Another useful thing for multiplexers, or we abbreviate them as MUX. Another useful thing is you can actually implement an entire sum of products uh, expression with a single multiplexer. So in this specific case here we have a three input multiplexer and um, so since we have a three input multiplexer we can have up to, well, we can have up to three inputs in our function. So let's give this guy a try here. Let's say we want to do, um, we want to do, actually, instead of a function, let's let's do a quick truth table here. So I'm going to draw out a truth table. Drawing out my truth table, one one, halfway there. Zero and one one one. All right. Now, whoops. Carried away with my line there. So let's call these inputs A, B, and C, and we'll call this guy out. Now let's just put some ones in here. Say we want this one to be a one, this one to be a one, and this one to be one. So that means the rest of them are zeros. Now, uh, follow closely because this is, well, it's su a super quick and easy way to do this, and it, it's almost unbelievably easy. So if we want to implement this truth table here, what we need to do is we need to feed in A here, B here, and C there. And then we just need to connect, so remember this is, Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's draw a little line here. So these are the numbers of these min terms essentially. And so we want zero, min term zero, to be a zero. So I'm going to put a zero here. And when I say I'm putting a zero here, what that really means in hardware is that this pin is coming off and connecting to ground, right? Ground is zero. And if I say, so this is zero, 
if I say it's connecting to 5 volts, it's actually going up. and Or if I say it's a 1, that means it's connecting to 5 volts, or whatever our logic level is. So here I'm just going to put a 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And that's literally it. That's what we need to do to get this truth table into this multiplexer here. Oops, it's a great looking arrow. So that's that's it. So the nice thing about implementing this kind of uh, sum of products form with the multiplexer is it's, is it's reconfigurable. We can configure it uh, as many times as we want because there's nothing that's hardwired. It's just hooked up in a multiplexer. I guess you could say this is hardwired, but what if instead of hardwiring it, we had, so here's our input pin, and we had a switch, and one part of the switch connected it to 5 volts, and the other part, right, connects it to ground. So if if we went through and had uh, an eight, right, eight individual switches for these, we could actually go through and reconfigure which ones are connected to five volts or ground, or in other words, which one is a zero and which one is a one. So we can configure this and change it however we want um, to, to fit whatever truth table we want this multiplexer to embody. So, um, Multiplexers are actually a fundamental component when it comes to uh, making or using a multiplexer, or uh, sorry, a FPGA, field programmable gate array. A field programmable gate array, uh, when we program that in, say, Verilog, uh, that, that compiles down to truth tables or digital logic functions, and because multiplexers are so easy to reconfigure and FPGAs have to be able to handle whatever kind of truth table we want to send it, uh, usually it's implemented in MUXs and what will happen in the, in the multiplexers is they'll go through and configure which ones are connected to zero and which ones are connected to one to get your desired output.